Positivity, everybody! <laughs> Can I just see if I can do this microphone less? Can you all hear me? Yeah! That's tremendous. Uh, okay, so I, I think what they're referring to is sometimes I've told stories here in the past whereby I, I move throughout the audience and I touch people. Uh, <laughs> but um, today, th this is going to be much more of a sober telling of a story. In fact, I'm going to read to you. Um, and uh, as I said, the story I'm going to read to you is a story that I wrote uh, quite recently and uh, just finished illustrating. It's called The Potatoes Woman. And um, as I tell it, um, with the help of Jesus and all the saints, um, the, the various images will, will pass by upon that fancy screen up there. <laughs> now, so are you ready? Yeah. 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 All good. <laughs> Her name was Bridgine Grace McJago G. O'Gilliac. <laughs> She was a mighty specimen. There was enough meat on her to feed a family of cannibals for a month. <laughs> and they're throwing dinner parties every second or third night of the week. <laughs> Anyways. She was stood at her kitchen sink, both taps gushing white solid cylinders of jet fast spray, using bare hands to scour muck off the potatoes that she had been the morning and most of the afternoon digging from the small patch beyond at the back of our cottage. Can you show the next picture now? <laughs> <laughs> that is uh, Bridgie. <laughs> it had been a day of sweat and effort and grunt and graft. But now the harvest was gathered and ready to be sold. She twisted to tightness the two tap turners and her wee home which had been reverberating with a loud, moist, double drum roll of splash again tin, fell suddenly silent. She released a quite contented sigh as she steered her shoulders back and forth and up and down, treating her muscles to a nice little inner massage. She was proud and jaded and ready for rest. Well done, Bee, <laughs> she said. Bee was a little pet name that she had for herself when she was feeling friendly. <laughs> You're done excellent. She folded her arms and stood amongst the five brimming baskets of well-cleaned spuds that seemed to be to glitter and gleam, even in the half-light, half-dark, nearly bedtime state that the day had come to. In the morning now, it'll be off to market, and by jingo, I'll fetch a fine price for these beauties. She climbed the stairs and got ready for bed. One hour later. <laughs> well, reader, or listener, you may have expected Bridgine to be deep in slumber by then, but alas, she was not. If one could escape consciousness by force of will alone, then she would have been. Sleep, however, like many other yokes in life, evades them lads that yearn for it the hardest. There, beneath her blankets, Bridgine stewed and Bridgine jiggled, unable to know rest. She was worrying about her potato. She was imagining that thieves might slip into her home and steal them if she dozed. She ached with anticipation of the pain of the pain of the pains that would pain her. <laughs> to rise in the morn and don her fancy frock. To draw a ring of sticky pink lipstick around her gob. To rejig her appearance in more than a dozen other ways using pastes and sprays and pins and powders. So that she would be presentable to her customers at market. Only to then step into her kitchen and be met with the heart-torturing sight of five empty baskets and all of her toil turned to naught and the shivering yuck of having been secretly invaded by who knows whom. So there, there she is. Be God, 
Jean, she said to herself. I bet you they'd rob me baskets and all. Why, of course they would. Sure didn't I set it out nicely for them. What a blagger! <laughs> She leapt from her bed and marched in ready rage towards the kitchen. Them spuds better not have disappeared already, Bridgine, she was saying. There will be wigs on the green, Bridgine. Wigs! <laughs> she flung open the door and... Nothing. Nothing. By which I mean nothing had happened. The potatoes <laughs> were just as she had left them, and there was no evidence of intrusion. <laughs> now, B, she chided, you had no reason to be worrying at all. The spuds is doing mighty. Oh, sure. I do have to laugh at myself by times. <laughs> oh, <my. laughs> Nevertheless, Bridgine fetched out five fine folded tablecloths from a high shelf in her pantry. She unfurled each one with a whip and a whoosh and laid them carefully over the baskets so as to conceal their precious cargo. <laughs> <laughs> That's your mouth there, babe, she announced. I sleep sound little more knowing that me pro tea is out of sight. She chuckled as she headed for her room and fell back into her bed. One <laughs> hour later. <laughs> Bridgine was just about to doze when, Lord Bridgine, any robbers worth their salt would be well right curious enough to snatch a peek beneath them coverings. And when they seen me glorious fruits, or vegetables, as the case may be, well, they'd be gone on and gone off with them. And me up here schnuthering away like a half-wit. <laughs> and what's more, them hand-embroidered tablecloths me mother made and be gone too. <laughs> sure, the wrapping's near as pretty as the present. <laughs> what was I thinking? <laughs> <laughs> She ran to the kitchen with fists cocked, ready to beat the bandits she was sure she'd find. But again, there was nothing. By which I mean again what I meant before, <laughs> that <laughs> the loaded potatoes had not been touched. I've an idea, mused Bridgie. I stick the whole of them in the bathtub. Nobody would think to look for potatoes there. So, even if they did break in, they'd never find them. She chortled. <laughs> <laughs> So, she dragged her day's work, a basket at a time, to her washroom and poured the potatoes into the bath. Oh, you're a genius bee, she assured herself. Spuds in a tub. How did I conjure it? Well, with a mind this queer great, I'm in for shock and mighty dreams tonight. <laughs> Mention of dreams there, I think. <laughs> One hour later. <laughs> Bridgine was still awake. Well, I, I say still awake, but she was far from still. Her frustrated frame twisting and turning, near braiding her blankets into rope. What if, she was wondering, what if them scallywags was watching me every move? And what if they was looking through me windows at the hiding of them spots? And wait, Bridgine, wait. What if either? What if they was only breaking in here by chance? Not knowing what manner of booty they'd come across. And then one of them needed to go to the toilet. And he was, you know, he was, he was doing that. And, and he started peering about. And when he'd get the land of his life when he'd seen the most outstanding batch of wood. Oh, he wouldn't be long about finishing his business and making off with my vegetable fortune. Oh, the rascals! <laughs> She screamed because she had liked that phrase when she heard herself say it the first time. 
Yes, a rude day is. But there was nobody. <laughs> Only a bathtub loaded with cream. <laughs> oh, Lord, save us, she panted. I've struck it lucky. The ragamuffins is not here yet. <laughs> she cupped her hands against the window pane and glared into the dark, trying to detect their movement through the night. <laughs> well, I scupper your schemes, she bellowed at the thieves who were not there. Get them neither be eaten nor profiting from a one of my glories. She gathered her potatoes back into their baskets. <laughs> I'll bury them! <laughs> she shouted. I'll bury them underground where yous would never know to look. <laughs> and tis well yous may creep into me home. And tis well you may skulk into me room. And tis well you may look me in the eye as ye kill me to me death. But mark ye well. Mark ye well the eye ye'll never see is any eye on any spud that I have ever slaved over. <laughs> With that, she hauled her potatoes back out to the patch behind the cottage. She then grabbed her spade and set about the task of digging holes and burying them back inside the earth. Several <laughs> hours later, the sun was crowded <coughs> just above the dawn horizon as Bridgine was stomping her boot to flatten clay upon the final burial. Now, they are well hid, she said, underground, where they'll not be spotted by thieves or bandits or nobody. She was exhausted. I'll head to bed. There's no fear of me not sleeping now. I need me rest too. I'd have to be up soon, fetching out them spuds, <laughs> gathering them into their baskets, hauling them into the house, scouring the muck off them, of course, getting them right for market. Sure, it's nearly exactly the things that I done yesterday. She paused. <laughs>